Good morning, Dr. Phil here. Today we will be discussing on bronchoscopy. Bronchoscopy is inspection of the tracheobronchial tree by passing an endoscope down its lumen. Rigid bronchoscopy. It is usually performed in the operation theatre. Indications include diagnosis of bronchial disease by tissue biopsy, removal of foreign bodies, management of hemoptysis, stenting, etc. It usually lasts 5 to 20 minutes. Pain is minimal. Supine position with the head and neck extended. Blood loss is usually minimal. Preoperative preparation. Focused assessment on the cardiorespiratory system. Look out for signs of airway obstruction such as stridor, tracheal tumor on CT scan, and foreign body inhalation. Neck mobility and teeth. Smoking related diseases such as bronchial carcinoma and COPD are common. Consider day case procedure if appropriate. Counsel about the risk of post operative coughing, hemoptysis, and saxametonium myalgia. Media stenoscopy assesses the suitability for lung resection and may be performed concurrently. Physiotherapy to reduce secretions. Pre-medication such as benzodiazepines to reduce awareness during anesthesia. Anticholinergics to reduce secretions. And drugs to reduce the volume and acidity of gastric secretions to reduce the risk of aspiration. Ensure adequate fasting period. Perioperative management. Full pre-oxygenation. The surgeon should be present prior to induction. Modes of anesthesia. Tiva with propofol. TCI alfentanil or remifentanil with intermittent saxametonium. There is high risk for accidental awareness in anesthesia, especially with jet ventilation using 100% oxygen or apneic oxygenation. Management. Pre-medication with benzodiazepines or opioids such as midazolam 2-3 mg and alfentanil 500-1000 to micrograms. Ensure regular supplements or continuous infusion of IV anesthetic agents such as propofol. Induction. IV induction if there is no airway obstruction. Inhalational induction if there is airway obstruction, especially in children. Sevoflurane in oxygen is recommended until the airway is secure. Neuromuscular blockade. Short-acting neuromuscular blocking drugs such as saxametonium or mevacurium just prior to bronchoscopy. It is difficult to achieve profound paralysis using mevacurium. Repeated doses of saxametonium can cause bradycardia. Treat with atropine. Do not administer atropine routinely to avoid exacerbating tachycardia. Longer acting neuromuscular blockers should be used if the patient is also undergoing mediastinoscopy, such as rocuronium and reversal with sugamadex. Remifentanil infusion is an alternative to neuromuscular blockade. Assessment of recovery of muscle tone can be done by observing or palpating the abdomen. Reducing sympathetic activation. Bronchoscopy can generate a marked sympathetic and hypertensive response. To obtain sympathetic activation, profound relaxation needs to be achieved. This should be balanced against the need for prompt return of laryngeal reflexes and spontaneous respiration. Spraying the larynx with 4% lidocaine can obtain this sympathetic response. This reduces the risk of perioperative and postoperative coughing and laryngospasm as well. However, this does not prevent carinal reflexes and may impair postoperative coughing. Methods of ventilation. Injector techniques. Air entrainment through the bronchoscope using intermittent jets of oxygen. Automatic jet ventilators have been used for long procedures. IPPV via a side arm on the bronchoscope. Occlude the proximal end with a window or a thumb. Deep anesthesia with spontaneous ventilation. Historically, diethyl ether and halothane was used. Before ventilating bronchoscopes became available, the patient breathed air and bronchoscopy was performed as anesthesia lightened. Sevoflurane is the current preferred agent. 
Anesthetic gases may be delivered via a side arm on the bronchoscope. Anesthesia may lighten quickly during serofluorine anesthesia. Insufflation techniques, particularly apneic oxygenation, is suitable for short procedures only. Intermittent IPPV via a tracheal tube placed in the proximal end of the bronchoscope and high-frequency ventilation. Coordinate ventilation with surgical activity, monitoring as standard. Loss of airway control can occur in the following situations. Torrential airway bleeding, post-biopsy, and stent insertion. Recovery. Suction the upper airway and confirm adequate muscle power prior to removal of the bronchoscope. Post-operative management. Recovery should be in the lateral head-down position. This encourages drainage of blood and secretions. If biopsy was done, the biopsy site should be down to avoid bleeding into the normal lung. When the patient is awake, sit the patient fully upright. Airway obstruction by a blood clot causes severe lower airway obstruction. Immediate intubation, suction and repeat bronchoscopy may be necessary. The fiber optic bronchoscope. Components. The control unit or body. Number one, eyepiece. Can be attached to a camera to display the image on a screen. It is only present on fiber optic scopes but not video scopes. Diopter adjustment ring for focusing. Tip deflection control lever. Bending angle of 60 to 180 degrees in the vertical plane is typical. Two wires extend from the handle to the tip in the insertion cord. Moving the lever down moves the tip up, and moving the lever up moves the tip downwards. Rotation of the body of the bronchoscope with the operator's wrist and shoulder is done for side-to-side -side movement. Working channel port for suction of secretions, insufflation of oxygen, and administration of local anesthetic solutions. Number seven, light source and light transmitting cable transmits light from an external source. Structure number eight is the suction valve and port. Number six is the flexible insertion cord. Consists of bundles of glass fibers for light and image transmission. Each bundle has 10,000 to 15,000 fibers with identical diameter and optical characteristics. Field of view is typically 120 degrees. It also contains tip bending control wires, working channel. Its length is typically 500 to 650 millimeters. Outer diameter ranges from 1.8 to 6.4 millimeters, allowing the use of tracheal tubes of 3 to 7 millimeters internal diameter. Other equipment necessary includes endoscopic face mask, oral airway, bite block, defogging agent, etc. Mechanism of action Concept of refraction Refraction is the phenomenon by which the direction of a wave will alter when it reaches a boundary of two different transition media. Consider two joint substances through which light waves are passing, N1 and N2. The normal line is a perpendicular, imaginary dotted line to the junction of N1 and N2. If light passes in the direction of the normal line, it will pass unaltered through N1 and N2. The angle of the emergent light at N1 and N2 junction increases as the angle between the incident light and the normal line increases. At the critical angle, the emergent light runs parallel to the junction of N1 and N2 and changes according to the refractive indices of N1 and N2. Total internal reflection is a phenomenon where a wave is entirely reflected at the junction of two differing media as the angle of incidence exceeds the critical angle. It occurs when the angle between the incident light and the normal line is above the critical angle, emergent light is reflected back into N1. Glass fibers with high refractive index of 5 to 20 microns diameter are used to transmit light while being flexible. A thin external transparent layer of cladding substance with a lower refractive index 
coats these individual fibers and provides optical insulation of each fiber in the bundle as no light is absorbed into the cladding layer. Typically, each fiber optic bundle contains 10,000 individual glass fibers. Light enters each fiber at a specific angle of incidence and travels down the fiber, reflected repeatedly from the external layer of the glass at a similar angle of incidence until it emerges from the opposite end. The glass fibers are arranged coherently. The arrangement of fibers is the same at both ends of the fiber optic cable. These fibers each carry a small part of the overall picture to allow a clear transmission of an image. Care of the flexible bronchoscope. To avoid breakage of the fiber optic fibers, avoid bending any part of the insertion cord other than the tip. Avoid twisting the insertion cord. Rotation should be from the body of the bronchoscope. Use a bite block in awake or unparalyzed patients to prevent inadvertent biting of the scope. Store with the insertion cord straight. Prior to use, bronchoscope sterilized, check tip movement, suction valve attached and suction available, light source attached and operational, connect the bronchoscope to monitor if using a screen and ensure correct orientation, defog the tip of the scope and adjust white balance, focus the eyepiece or monitor on some written words, confirm the integrity of the image. Fiber Optic Bronchoscopy Indications Diagnostic and Therapeutic Diagnostic indications include for chest infection, an assessment of multiple conditions such as the cause of airway obstruction by a clot tumor or foreign body, tumors, tears, thermal damage, and chest x-ray abnormalities. For chest infection, especially atypical, samples for culture and sensitivity can be obtained by washings, brushings, or transbronchial or endobronchial biopsies or needle aspiration. Bronchoalveolar lavage, repeated installation of 20 ml of sterile saline with subsequent aspiration, useful in diagnosis of both infective and non-infective processes. Therapeutic indications include aspiration of sputum and aspirated materials, Mucolytic drugs can be instilled onto the mucus plugs. Bronchoalveolar lavage has been used in severe asthma. Removal of foreign body, directed physiotherapy to loosen secretions, hemoptysis, saline lavage for small areas of bleeding, compression of small bleeding points using the bronchoscope or balloon tip catheter to the affected segment. Airway management. Tracheal intubation in airway obstruction, changing tracheal tubes, confirmation of correct placement of tracheal tracheostomy and endobronchial tubes, percutaneous tracheostomy, assessment of the tracheal bronchial tree before extubation. The fiber optic bronchoscope can be left in situ in cases with high risk of post extubation airway obstruction, such as in airway edema, while the endotracheal tube is removed and the airway assessed. If required, the ETT can be recited over the bronchoscope. Contraindications and caution. Coagulopathy, severe hypoxemia, and the nasally intubated patient. Coagulation studies should be performed if biopsies are planned. It is challenging to perform fiber optic bronchoscopy in the nasally intubated patient. Narrow lumen scope can be used, but suction is limited. Complications of fiber optic bronchoscopy Hypoxemia from suction, loss of peak, partial obstruction of the endotracheal tube, inadequate delivery of tidal volume, hemodynamic disturbances such as hypertension, tachycardia, and arrhythmias, bleeding, perforation is more common if biopsies are taken and may result in pneumothorax, coughing, bronchospasm, or laryngospasm. Management of bronchoscopy in the ICU Optimization Correct electrolyte imbalances, correct coagulopathy, reduce secretions by physiotherapy and anticholinergic drugs, maintain hemodynamic stability with inotropes and fluids, topical lidocaine may reduce airway irritation, 
other measures as appropriate. Increase the pressure alarm limit on the ventilator. Lubricate the scope with lubricant gel or saline. Pre-oxygenate with 100% oxygen. Monitoring as standard. If unintubated, awake patients may be managed under local anesthesia as for awake intubation. Lidocaine gel to nares and spray to pharynx. Short-term IV sedation and paralysis. Insert the scope nasally to prevent coughing and hemodynamic effects from tracheal or carinal stimulation. Inject 2% lidocaine into the trachea. If intubated, pass the bronchoscope through a rubber sealed connector at the ETT's proximal end. Continue IPPV at FiO2 100%. Hypoxemia may worsen during bronchoscopy. To minimize trauma to the trachea and or the scope, an assistant should support the ET tube during the procedure. To avoid damaging the fiber optics, avoid bending any part of the insertion cord other than the tip or twisting the insertion cord which may result in breakage of the fiber optic fibers. Rotation should be from the body of the bronchoscope. Use a bite block in awake or unparalyzed patients. The insertion cord should be stored straight. Reducing air leaks around the scope. Wrap a swab coated in lubricant jelly around the leak. To ensure adequate ventilation, use a 5mm diameter bronchoscope with an 8mm tracheal tube. Pass the bronchoscope alongside the tracheal tube or use high-frequency ventilation. Ensure adequate sedation, analgesia, and neuromuscular blockade. Perform thorough inspection and any necessary procedures. Remove the scope and allow reoxygenation before continuing if SpO2 is less than 85% or hemodynamic instability occurs. Bronchoalveolar lavage. Instill at least 60 mL of preferably warm isotonic saline into the affected lung area without suction, followed by aspiration into a sterile catheter trap. Send all bronchoscopic samples promptly to the lab. After procedure, adjust the ventilator settings as appropriate. These are my references. Thank you.